Thomas James Osborne was born in St. Cloud, Minnesota, January 5, 1956, to Irene and Bill Osborne. He was the third of eight children. Raised in Billings, Montana, he graduated from Central High School and attended Eastern Montana College on a basketball scholarship. He comes from a family of eight, and they're all eagles. They just are such achievers. After a short stint as a PE teacher and coach, Tom founded the Big Sky State Games in Montana. And it was just him and his mom, Irene, and his sister, Jan. That was Tom's baby, and he, he and his mom ran it out of their garage. They took a wagon and dragged the torch up the street to the stadium. I mean, it was such a grassroots thing. In 1995, at a fly fishing school, Tom met Amy. He asked me out to go fly fishing for our first date. We are wading in the river with our fly rods. He goes, wait, Amy, you know, you aren't, you aren't doing it right. So he shows me how I should be doing it. I say, okay, just a second, Tom, let me get this fish in, and then you can teach me. And that day, I caught about six fish, and he got not a single bite. <laughs> With his success in promoting amateur sports in America, Tom was selected to join the U.S. Olympic Committee's Board of Directors, and his optimism, talent, and ability to create was noticed in Colorado Springs. You have to wind back to the United States Olympic Committee, and Tom was on the executive committee when I was the president. And he always was concise, he was clear, and with the state games, he had truly made a difference. And when we had an opening in the Sports Corp, there is no one in the United States, maybe in the world, that could have done a better job. We had only been married nine months and he got offered the job down here. He took the job and he did come back and forth and I came down here. It was not easy, but um, what the job grew into, it, it was just such a passion. It was, it was just wonderful for him and it was wonderful for me. And he came down and, and, and took the, the Rocky Mountain State Games, which were just starting again after a couple of years of hiatus, and, and grew it into 10, 11,000 participants every year. The other thing that he did was to introduce a whole group of people, young people especially, to the love and the excitement of sports through the Rocky Mountain State Games. If you are doing something out in a park to you and find a way to make it part of the Rocky Mountain State Games. It was incredible. <laughs> hey, Todd, <Tom. laughs> there's some kids play cornholing. Oh, let's take some medals over there and, and put it on them. You're a part of the State Games. At his first year-end performance review, the only area of improvement we could note on his evaluation form we could think of was Tom. You need to add more ties to your wardrobe. He had this real niche of getting everyone involved. Private foundations, the city of Colorado Springs. He just had a niche of making them see the vision that he was bringing and everyone seemed to, to benefit from that. Most people come in and ask uh, legitimately for what uh, they might be able to receive in support of their endeavor. Tom always made you feel like it was your endeavor, so you wanted to participate. Everybody was a part of the success. If you felt like you were an insider and you knew exactly what was happening, you felt that if we were successful, you felt you were a part of that and you were a part of making it happen. You could bring out the lighter side of these events, kind of separate you from the stress of the moment and help you realize, like, man, look, people are having a great time out here. Tom had uh, done an incredible amount of work to bring a professional cycling race to Colorado Springs. So the day of the race comes, a torrential rain starts. I mean, you could hardly see across the street. It was raining so hard. Of course, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, what's this gonna look like on television? And uh, the, 
the cyclists go by and Tom and I are kind of leaning over a fence and he turns to me and he says, isn't this great? That epitomized Tom. He saw the big picture and that allowed him to always be an optimist. He changed the character of the organization, the trajectory of the Sports Corp. I think several years ago, nobody would have envisioned that we'd be involved in a hot air balloon event. But now we've been involved in the Labor Day liftoff for six years in its largest annual event in Colorado Springs. Tom, he loved music. He could have been a fabulous drummer. But he liked electronic music. One of Tom's first fundraisers at the Sports Corporation was a reggae concert at a club downtown. So we learned that night the fine art of dancing to reggae music. Just go get in the groove and float. That's what he said. In 2009, Tom and Sports Corp were asked to help with the Pikes Peak International Hill Climb. The famous auto race was struggling as it dealt with a decade-long paving process that changed the course from dirt to asphalt. It was honestly Tom's keen biz business sense that helped get the Pikes Peak International Hill Climb back on track and have the international footing that it does now. He just did a terrific job. At he he was not in this for self-recognition. He was in for the benefit of the event. He never backed down from a challenge. I would go into his office with um, my, my list of all the problems and all the things I didn't think we were gonna be able to do. I would always start with, we can't do that, we can't do that, and he would always say, yes we can, yes we can, let's find a way. Tom put his heart first, and I think you can say that with most of the decisions that Tom made. A good mentor to all the competitors, local and abroad. It's become faster, better, bigger. He just did a terrific job. Charlie was his world. He just, that's all he could think about. As all of his friends know, he inundated everyone with Charlie pictures, videos. And every other day, he would show me a video of Charlie. And then he'd show it again before he... <laughs> and I'd get at least twice a day. He'd talk about that first. Then we would talk about Sports Corp. You know, the kids, and now their spouses, love. And just couldn't have thought more highly of their dad. About six weeks after Tom died, his little grandson was born. And his name is James Bridges Hodden. James is Tom's middle name. So he was really named after Tom. Charlie says her papa is an angel looking over her now. And James too. That will be her whole life she'll have her angel. Last 4th of July, he had this idea of doing 4th of July in your backyard. And I was like, Tom, that's never going to fly. The rest of us are thinking, we're not going to have a 4th of July celebration. Tom Osborne's calling me and said, we got this. Instead of having one big celebration, we're going to have 10 smaller uh, celebrations. People all over the city can see it. They uh, don't have to go far. A lot of people can see it from their back porches. It'll be great. Oh my gosh, we can have free ice cream in all the neighborhoods. And that's when I just go, oh my gosh, honey, you know, <laughs> that might be too much. Free ice cream. No, no, we've got to have free ice cream. We can get ice cream trucks. And my gosh, it was so good that we're gonna do it again this year, and I wouldn't be surprised if it becomes the permanent model. Tom was the guy that put it all together and said, Mayor, this is a winner. It was probably one of the most special Fourth of Julys that I've ever been a part of. It was due to his vision. It was due to the execution of the team. It was really a Tom Osborne uh, event.
He was a kid at heart. He just saw a lot of things through a child's eye. Tom Osborne truly made a difference in the fabric of this community. He brought initiative, he brought the sort of sports savvy, which really put Colorado Springs on the map. Sport is now about a half billion dollar a year industry for the city of Colorado Springs. That's a big chunk of the economy. Tom played a huge role in that. Tom probably didn't even recognize within himself how incredibly special he was. But I think he recognized in himself what made him happy deep down. Tom loved this community, and it was evident in every single thing that he did. He loved this town, he loved everything about it. Uh, he would want us to be optimistic, and he would want us to be creative. One more event, and you know, he would get one more event one more time, many times. The work is not done. What he has left with us is just a road map and the inspiration to continue the good work. The legacy that he's created is going to last for an awfully long time. He's made this town better, he's made this community better, and he's put a smile on the faces of, of everybody who lives here in Colorado Springs. What more can you ask for?